Hey Dave Lacani with Head Games Motorworks and today we are going to roll back the clock and look at that BMW that we had a failure with quite a few months ago. Check it out. So Tyler Pappas came to us a couple months ago and he had a failure. So he broke a retainer in his cylinder head and he had some issues and we went through the whole spring kit thing with super tech i think you guys might remember that i'll put a link up here somewhere or down there anyway so we had some issues and we were waiting for him to get the cylinder head back now he had three failures so he had two cylinder heads uh or i should say two same same failures in one cylinder head and that's the cylinder head we have here today and he also had a failure he bought a brand new head uh, put all the same valve train in that cylinder head and had another failure. So they all broke one intake retainer. I know a lot of things have been thrown around by him saying that it was a material issue. And my takeaway from that is that if it was an actual material issue, then we would be seeing this as a rampant thing. So like everybody would be breaking retainers because it's a actual issue, right? So like if a material is a problem, a material is a problem all the time. It's not gonna just be selective and pick one intake to break and uh, what else could it be? And so I had to dive deep. I'm gonna show you guys uh, just trying to figure out the problem and I'm gonna share that with you. All the buckets. Now, the first thing I noticed that they all kind of look like they had some oil starvation. Now oil starvation can be many things. It could be an actual starvation of oil, but it can also be oil contamination. So I don't know what kind of fuel he uses, um, but it breaks down the oil and could become a problem. I mean, that is, uh, so all of them don't look, they, they just don't all look that hot, but they're, these are a hydraulic lifter. None of them look trashed because so you can see, I don't know if you can see here, but the, you can't really feel anything. So I would pass these. You just need to polish them up and they would look fine. But uh, so they're hydraulic and they have these little nipples here and these nipples, you can push them down and that's how you check them. So they're supposed to be a little squeezy. So they have a little oil hole on the side here and uh, you don't have to put anything in them. Supposedly these things will just pump right back up. And um, so I inspected this is part of the inspection was just to make sure that these things all move free. So I noticed that this guy here, no matter what I did, I couldn't, I couldn't get this thing to uh, collapse. Now this particular one had been in all of the failures and it's one, all the rest of them. So this is not all of them, but all the rest of them were, Okay, and all of them were squishy, but this one, this one, no matter what I did, I couldn't get it to work. So one thing I did was I put it in a vise. Uh, this is not the one that's bad. And I just wanted to see if the, any of them would collapse. So all of them collapse. You can watch the plunger go in. And when I put this one in, so this is the one guy see like a little bit of oil, but that thing is rock solid. It will not go in whatsoever. So when looking at the buckets, you'll notice that on the sides here, there is certain signs of the oil starvation as I was talking about. So when you look at the side of the bucket, you can see how much friction was going on here. There was a lot of oil starvation. Um, I'll show you the, the trays as well, but there was just tons of this going on. Now this is a good bucket and this is the bad bucket. Now, if you notice on the bad bucket versus the good bucket, you see that wear. So I'm going to go with that the lifter was hanging open. Uh, what happens is that the lifter will pump up and then it will push the tip of the valve down. And what could happen here or what could have caused the problem would be, uh, this is the first theory, is that the pumped up lifter would push down the valve and it would push it 
to a point where the retainer or is pushing the valve through the retainer, through the ID of the retainer because it's pumped up. And you would think that that would hurt buckets though. So the buckets were good, the cams looked good. I'm gonna show them in a second. Everything looked good, I don't understand that part. So there must be like a clearance issue, but we gotta figure out what is that clearance issue? Is it an issue with the bucket? Like did uh, too much lift and then it pushed the bucket open? Uh, I know that these problems arise just in OEM form, so I know that this particular bucket was an issue with BMWs back when they first came out and that they still seem to be an issue. And then, uh, so we had a failure. We took everything off of the engine that failed, just changed the valve, put all that stuff on another head and it still has the same failure. So I think it's the common denominator would be that, that this lifter, and this is why I came up with this, is that the lifter is the problem. So. I mean, SuperTech even went through, the, you know, because people, well, Tyler was saying it had to be a material issue. So SuperTech paid for uh, to get a metallurgy test done, which is not cheap uh, by a third party. Everything turned out good there. So Martin from SuperTech and I were talking, and I was like, why don't you just put it in the press? Okay, we added a spring locator so the spring wouldn't go sideways. So OEM spring, spring locator, Container, OEM keepers, all triple glue. We're gonna get the coil bind. Okay, here we go. Coil bind. There we go. So a lot more pressure than the OEM. I've never actually had a failure, this is the first one. So what could it be? So I'll show you the intake cam in a second, but this is the exhaust cam and you can see more of the same when I was talking about the oil starvation. It definitely had some trash run through it. There was obviously a broken retainer, but that's not like a lot, of, a lot of stuff. I think maybe it could be fuel related. I do see where the bucket was rubbing the base circle. So that means that there may be I don't think that, I guess it doesn't need lash because it's a hydraulic. I don't mess with these hydraulic stuff very often, but maybe you guys can correct me. All right, so I wanted to take a good look at the valve seals because in the first failure, we had a retainer that had the imprint of a guide on the backside of it. And we also had Tyler complaining that the valve seals were leaking. Now, I get that question all the time. Usually it's not the, the actual seal, it's usually something else uh, going on outside the engine and it just smokes a lot. So people think of valve seals right away, but you know, when they're new, uh, you can see that these look perfectly intact. I, I actually broke one of these off because it, so it was looking a little suspect. I was thinking maybe we pushed them down too far, um, but no, the, they, the part that would be too far down, as you can see, would be below the surface, or I should say above the surface. So it's above the guide. There's no way that like we could put it on too far and it break the seal. So something had to have hit the seal to make it a little brittle. So when you look at the combustion chambers, you can see just a ton of oil in here. When I see a ton of oil, I never, I never go to valve seals first. That's the cylinder head guy. You also notice that the exhaust port has oil all the way up to the seat. How would it be possible for anything that has to do with a valve guide possibly push? So you look at the chambers, the chambers are full of oil and look at below the valve seat, you see all the oil down there. And to me, that is not a valve seal issue. What is odd is that it only hurt one side of the ports. So if you see like this thing is full of oil this thing is full of oil, this half oil, this one half oil. Like it doesn't even really make sense. Like you can't make sense of this thing. Like why would it only do that? So I, I get why somebody would possibly think it would be seals. So the thing about oil coming out of a valve seal or a valve guide is it's not gonna be able to fight the force of exhaust gas to go past the valve seat into the chamber or all around that area. Anytime it's a valve seal, 
or a valve guide. In my experience, it's always been after the guide. So it would leak out of the valve and would go into the exhaust port and out the exhaust port, but it would never go into the valve seat. But so the next thing is we're gonna measure the bottom of the retainer to the guide and we're gonna see how much clearance there is for that. I don't know the, the answer to this, so let's, uh, let's keep watching. I put the Cambridge in here and I found a very surprising result that would, um, it kind of changes the whole thing. Now I, I almost don't care because I see what's going on here and it could absolutely cause the failure we're talking about. So if you notice, this is the Cambridge, the Cambridge is in here and I put a bucket that, or a lifter that's good. So this lifter pumps, I can push on the top, or I should say I push on the nipple and it goes down. And you'll notice that there is no light. I put a light by hand here and there's no light peeking through the port, which means that the valve is sealing. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put in the one that the lifter that does not push down, the one that I had to like pry and do all kinds of stuff and it still wouldn't push down, what do we get then? All right, so now we have the bad one and you'll see here, I didn't bolt either one of these down, but take notice of that. So the valve is open without us doing anything to it. We're just pushing down on it, not bolted, nothing, cam's not on it. And what that's gonna do is push the retainer down even farther. I'm not claiming to be an expert here because we do not install these normally. They're hydraulic and uh, there's really no reason for a hydraulic lifter to be at head games. But when I install this and I get that there's no oil, but the other one that's squishy, uh, has a check spring in it and I have everything installed. I'll show you here, but everything in it should all being equal, the valve should stay closed. And if I put a different lifter in it, it's fine. I put the lifter in it that I was in the failed cylinder and now it stays open. That tells me that there's a problem. And the problem is that you are gonna be able, you're basically starting, you're not starting from zero, you're starting from wherever the valve is open at, however much the valve is open at, and that is the problem. So if the lifter would push in, it's already open, and if it pushes into the center of the valve, it's gonna break the retainer. And I guarantee you that there is many, 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 many more people than just this guy who is going to make this same mistake. They're gonna keep taking out the lifter, and they're gonna put it in another cylinder head. I'm sure that they're hard to get, and they're also expensive, and then now you have multiple failures and the only way to get away from it is to change it into a different spring kit maybe but uh, maybe with something that has a little bit less uh, material underneath the retainer um, and then that's why they don't see failures but the failure is still there the failure would never really go away it's just masked now i haven't seen any other spring kits we don't install any other spring kits besides the super tech but this is my synopsis on why this thing failed. Why keep going down that same road? You know, you, uh, if you have a failure and you don't fix it, if you don't find the problem and then you just point a finger at somebody, everybody, you're assuming, and you know what happens when we assume, you make an ass out of you and me. And, uh, and that's why I really wanted to make sure that we figured out the problem, and I really think we did and that is because it's a lifter. So it was always one lifter or one retainer that broke in three cylinder heads. The common denominator was the camshafts and the lifters. It was two different cylinder heads and then that can't happen unless something from the one cylinder head went into the other and retainers don't break themselves and they especially don't break in half by themselves. We recorded this video back in December, and since then, we've actually assembled a few of these heads with different spring kits on the market, and I can kind of say that they were lackluster. Now, compared to the SuperTech, all the other ones on the market were too far away from coilbind. And when I say that, I mean, we're talking a quarter inch from coilbind. I'm just not a big fan of that. 
And that's because the farther away we get from Quillbind, if you ever played with a slinky, you know that when you get it really far away, the inside of the spring is gonna get wobbly and it loses pressure on the top and the bottom. That's just not my thing. I'd rather have something that's a little closer to Quillbind, but it would mask the problem here because you would be so far away from Quillbind. Of course, it's not gonna break a retainer because now you have so much distance to Quillbind that there's no way that they, even if the bucket is completely extended, it's not gonna push the valve through the retainer and you won't see that failure. And a lot of people are getting away from the SuperTech because of this failure uh, from what I'm hearing, but I just don't see why you would want to do that because I think it's a superior spring kit. All right, so that's gonna do it for us today. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment below. I'd love to hear from you. Toodles.